At the Bloom Burton Healthcare Conference, I'm with Lee Buckler, CEO of Repocell Life Sciences. Lee, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, so give us an update about Repocell Life Sciences. Um, what are the financials of the company uh, in 2017? So we're really excited about what we've been able to do um, this year since the beginning of the year. We raised $4 million September last year, a um, bit of a restructuring, refinancing of the company. We're a cell therapy regenerative medicine company, um, and we raised another $3 million just in February. So we raised $7 million in the last five months, um, and really that was to get us through some very a very exciting quarter filled with um, clinical data readouts. Right. So we're sitting um, now with this interesting transition. We've got first in human clinical data on all of our assets. We've got a near-term commercial um, asset with our dermal injector. We're sitting around $3 million in the bank and really looking to define for shareholders over the next few weeks um, the go-forward strategy, what that looks like, what the anticipated milestones are. Right, and with uh, regenerative medicine, are you focused on aesthetics or, or injuries? So we're an interesting company. We are, um, we're focused kind of on two pillars. One is aesthetics and the other is orthopedics or sports injury um, particularly. So it all has a, a bit of an anti-aging um, um, baby boomer sort of resonance uh, uh, to it. Mm -hmm. um, in, in many ways because we're in pattern baldness, um, skin rejuvenation, and the kind of tendon regeneration that leads to just chronic pain, fatigue, and loss of function in tennis elbow, golfer's right. elbow, jumper's knee, the things mm -hmm. like that. Now, what are the competitors uh, in the industry for uh, for your company? So the competition looks radically different, obviously, for every different one of our products. You know, for androgenic alopecia, uh, which is the primary reason for pattern baldness in men and thinning hair in women, the standards of care are microtransplant surgery, which is removing you know thousands of follicles from the back of your head to, to the, the top. Okay. Um, that may or may not work, and it's invasive and messy and um, and expensive. Um, the other two options are Propecia, which is a re repurposed prostate drug. Mm -hmm. um, women can't use it because it's contraindicated for women, and um, and it, it it gives you a marginal increase over over baseline of hair density, but it doesn't stop the progression of the disease, and it has like most drugs side effects that some men just aren't willing to um, um, to to take. Right. Um, the other is Rogaine, which is a topical. Mm -hmm. Works for some people marvelously. Others, um, it doesn't work so well. And a lot of people just don't want to spread goop on their head every day. Of course. Um, for tendon, you know, the, one of the reasons why I love tendon was because this is a significant market that there's really nothing for. Um, there's no, you know, when you take an ultrasound uh, and you look and you see that the tendon has degenerated to the point where it's causing that kind of pain and loss of function, there's no tear that can go, that can be surgically addressed. Mm -hmm. And so essentially your orthopedic surgeon will tell you to go home and stop doing what aggravates it. Right. Skin, of course, has lots of topical lotion and potion um, uh, uh, opportunities in the market. There are also injectables, dermal fillers. There's about $2 billion worth of dermal fillers injected largely into people's faces today to mm -hmm. make them look you know temporarily younger like uh, Botox is a muscle relaxant there's also fillers right. that fill um, your skin the springs under your mattress if you will that make you look temporarily younger because your skin is plumper and less wrinkly mm -hmm. but the products do what the name suggests and that is temporarily fill and they're really not regenerating mm -hmm. what we've done um, observed in our phase one study is that in looking at 10 different biomarkers in aging and sun-damaged skin, saw our product um, significantly changing the profile of those biomarkers in a way which our investigators think is highly correlative with what uh, the, aesthetic, the expected aesthetic impact. Mm -hmm. That's a fancy way of saying that we think what's happening when we inject our cells, which are highly prolific of type 1 collagen, is that they're actually accomplishing a regeneration mm -hmm. of that layer under your skin that keeps it looking young and healthy and wrinkle-free. Wow, that's something I'd love to tell my parents. Um, but how do you commercialize your products? So these are all, um, uh, the, both of the cell therapy products are a, a very simple manufacturing protocol. You take a tissue biopsy from the, from the patient, um, it gets sent to a manufacturing facility, where over um, a handful of weeks, a product is manufactured mm -hmm. using their own, your own cells, um, released per product specification in a glass vial that gets sent back to the clinic for injection, mm -hmm. tendon, skin, or scalp, regulated by the FDA 
FDA, Health Canada, wherever you are. So it's a regulated product, just like any kind of injectable that there is out there today. And the device is regulated as well, mm -hmm. but under a different pathway, a CE mark in Europe or a 510K in the US, for right. instance. Right. So yeah, um, just going over uh, the size of the company too and where you're headed for 2017, um, can you give us some details? So we're, tra we're a publicly traded company yep. um, on the venture here on the TSX mm -hmm. and the OTC um, uh, in the US and the Frankfurt Exchange in Europe. We're about a $25 million market cap company. We've raised about that much money um, um, over the course of the company's history. We um, have transitioned this year from um, uh, from um, being pre-data in many ways to now having first in human data on all of our assets. And next year, we're really positioning hard mm -hmm. um, for the for the dermal injector to um, you know take what we do this year, which is build and test the device, to next year getting it CE marked and licensed. Our whole business is really to build as much value as possible in the in the early to mid stage R and D, and then partner with much larger com commercially established companies, like we've done with Shiseido for pattern baldness in Asia across our entire pipeline. All right, Lee, thank you for your time. Thank you, Rachel. For more coverage of the Bloomberg Conference, you can visit smallcappower.com.